let's look at another more interesting example of phase lines of bifurcation. So inside the phase lines tool, let's select this second equation from the bottom. dy dt equals r plus ay minus y cubed. Now this is two parameters. So I can adjust both these parameters and watch different phase line phenomena. If I let r be zero, it's a little bit like the cubic function that we did in class. Whereas we move a back and forth, we twist the cubic at the center, and we kind of have a pitchfork bifurcation diagram. And you can see how the bifurcation diagram matches the slope field, matches the slope function. It's important to be able to match those phase line, slope field, and slope function. I move the a back and forth, and that changes the slope function, slope field and phase line inside the bifurcation diagram. Now if I move R a bit, what I do is create an interesting bifurcation diagram. One where as I slide A upwards, I create a intercept with a slope function and the y-axis. And I split that apart and have several parts in my phase line bifurcation diagram. For example, here I see the phase line having an up section, down section, up section, down section. That's mirrored here in the slope field. Up, down, up, down. But if I move the A, swing it to the other side, I only have one equilibrium point with a region of growth below and a region of decay above. If I fix the slope function here and slide R back and forth, I can kind of watch the bifurcation diagram merge, kind of morph through pitchfork and figure like this, through back through the pitchfork to kind of a mirror figure on the other side. And I can slide A up and down accordingly to create a new equilibrium point at a positive place on the y-axis. It's a good idea to slide through this example and watch how the phase line exactly matches the slope field, exactly matches the slope function. Do that until you're comfortable that you can read all three of those and see how they match while you change your diagrams.